So what would you say is more important when hitting a lob? Height or depth? Well, for my money, it's height. It's gonna win you a lot more points than just focusing on getting it deep. Now, this video is courtesy of Jay Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. So let's watch this short point and then we'll analyze it. All right, so right off the bat, we can see the servers are in an I formation. So in this scenario, the net player is either gonna to move to his left or to his right. Now, it's really smart that the net player moves to his right in this scenario. Here's why. When you serve in doubles, you can either serve to the inside ground stroke or to the outside ground stroke. The inside ground stroke is on the side toward the center of the court. The outside ground stroke is toward the outside of the court. So inside ground stroke, outside ground stroke. It just so happens that the inside ground stroke gets ripped up the line very often. And the outside ground stroke gets pulled cross court very often. It's a bit counterintuitive, but when you serve down the T in doubles, and maybe not the T, but definitely right to the inside ground stroke, that ball gets pulled down the line over and over again. So you can see the serve goes to the inside ground stroke and the server covers the alley. This is definitely premeditated. The server and the server's partner are on the same page. It was super smart for them both to do what they did. Now, in, if the serve had gone out wide, you would want the net player to have moved cross court because that backhand, especially for a right-hander, is most likely gonna get pulled cross court. So now let's check out the net player when he pops up. He pops up, he gets a high volley, he doesn't do much with the volley. Let me show you why. Watch when he pops up. When he pops up, he drags the racket and keeps it low. Let me actually get a racket here. He, watch what he does. He, he's down here and his racket is low. And when he pops up, his racket's still down. When you pop up, you want your racket up. Because his racket isn't up, he's actually late with his racket. He doesn't quite do much with it. Like right there, you can see he's fully popped up, but the racket's still down below net level. And so it makes him late on a ball that's coming right, to, right above his head. So you want that racket up, especially when you pop up. Don't pop up with your racket still down below net level. So he doesn't do much with this volley. He tries to split the uprights, hitting between them. And then here a lob occurs right over their heads and they have to run back. So let's talk about what just happened right there or what should happen and what happened. So let's create this scenario on the strategy board. So here's the returner with a ball in the middle and he hit a lob down the line. If this is you and a ball goes over your head, your number one priority is to see if you can hit an overhead, right? You're trying to go back and see if you can hit the best shot possible, which would be kind of a scissor kick overhead while moving backward. So while you're busy moving back, your partner should be doing their job to come back in case you can't get that lob that's going over your head. See, when the ball goes over your head and doubles, you're either gonna say, mine, or you're gonna say, yours, and you're gonna have to switch. This player shouldn't wait to hear what happens. When the ball goes over your head, as you're going back, they don't care what you say, they're running back right away. If you say you've got it to slam an overhead, then they go back. But if you say, yours, please switch, you sh this partner, the partner should have already gone back to get it, and this player, or you, then switch. Watch what happens. The net player here, he doesn't go anywhere when the lob occurs. He just holds his ground, he moves a little bit, and the guy who's being lobbed looks and says, hey buddy, go get it. He's like, wait a minute, my partner didn't go get that ball? So now he has to run back. Now, a couple things. Let's look at these guys. Where should they be going? When you lob your opponent successfully, so let's say you're the blue team now, when you lob successfully over your opponent's heads and let's say they switch, you and your partner should put your toes on the service line. When you Write this in stone, etch this in your mind. When you lob your opponents, put your toes on the service line. Whether that means you move back or move forward, it doesn't matter. You need to put your toes on the service line because you're expecting a lob back 
And if your toes are on the service line, if it's a great lob and nice and deep, you can go back. If it's a bad lob, you can come forward. If it comes right to you, it comes right to you. So watch what happens. This guy gets too close. This guy stops on the service line, which is exactly what you want. So you want to be on the service line. So then a lob goes really high into the air. He lets it bounce and then he misses the overhead. All right. So I have a recommendation for you when it comes to hitting lobs. You want to hit lobs, especially defensive when you're running back really high and forget about hitting it deep. Do you know that the number one reason why players miss their lobs long and the ball lands past the, the, the baseline? I have people all the time, Ryan, why do my lobs always land deep? Just a couple inches. I, I just can't get the ball to land in the court. It's because they have the wrong definition of a lob. Most players think that the definition of a lob is a ball that goes over your opponent's head and lands behind them. If in your mind, when you lob, you're thinking, I got to get this ball to bounce behind them. Well, no wonder you're missing your lobs long, because if your opponent is around the service line, you're going to try to hit it over their head and get it to land behind them, which might have to be three feet past the baseline. Instead of thinking of making it land deep, just hit it super high. And I recommend getting the ball up in the air for at least two and a half seconds. So let's see, we got a timer here. Let's see how long his ball goes up in the air. There's one second. There's, oh goodness, goodness, goodness. I already missed it. There's two seconds. There's two and a half. So right there, we're at two and a half. So let's see where the ball is. There, man, he got that ball way up in the air. That was amazing. So already 2.6, there's the ball. So the ball is bouncing. Oops, I didn't mean to get rid of, put that timer down. Sorry, it's my first time using this app. So you're watching it live as I struggle my way through this app. It's called OnForm, by the way. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. OnForm, it's a great app. So check this out. The ball bounces at right around three seconds. And then what does this guy do? He lets it bounce. Now, anytime I suggest that you hit your lob super high, in the comment section, I get a lot of keyboard warriors and they say, oh man, Ryan, if you did that, I would let the ball bounce and then I would crush it down your throat. I'm like, all right. So here's my question to all of you. And I want you to write this in the comment section. When was the last time with a coach or with a friend, you practiced lobbing super high, letting the ball bounce and hitting it out of the air. I'm sorry, hitting it off the bounce, hitting it overhead off the bounce. When was the last time you practiced that in a drill, in a cardio tennis, in a lesson, private lesson, semi-private lesson, a team practice? It's really not practiced. So here is a shot that you can force your opponent into hitting and they've never even practiced it. It is not as easy as the pros on TV make it look. And sure, they could hit that ball out of the air, but it is descending so fast as it's dropping 9.8 meters per second per second, the chances of them timing that go way down. That's why people let it bounce. Here's super high level college players and they're letting the, this ball bounce. So he lets the ball bounce and he hits the overhead and he screws it up. And I, I would have probably screwed it up too. I can't beat these guys. I don't pretend to uh, be able to beat them. And he hits the ball about two meters long. There was a lot of info there. Film yourself playing and see if you can incorporate some of these ideas. But here's the main idea. When you're running back in doubles or singles, it's the same thing, but in doubles and you're going to lob, hit it super high and the chances of winning go way up. Now, if you need to win more doubles matches, then check out the new rules of doubles by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Will Hamilton teams up with Craig O'Shaughnessy, the leading stats guy in the world for what's working on both the men's and women's doubles tours and what is not working, and they're sharing this information with you, the recreational tennis player, in this brand new online solution. To check out the new rules of doubles in the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app, you can click the link in the description below or wait till the end of the video where you can click the link right on the screen. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or maybe you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Work on these double strategies. When you get lobbed, lob it super high back. And think about it, the higher you lob, the higher your chances of winning the point. You work on these strategies, there's no doubt. You're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net.
You got this.